Travis with the Jellyfish Warehouse and today we're going to be looking at how to keep bay nettle jellyfish. Bay nettles are a type of sea nettle jellyfish which is a larger group of jellies that can be found all over the world. They make an excellent beginner species as they have few special requirements and are incredibly resilient and hardy. A quick note about their name, in 2017 it was discovered that bay nettles were actually a separate species from the Atlantic sea nettle. At the Jellyfish Warehouse we raise bay nettles. They're smaller and easier to care for than the Atlantic sea nettles. As you might have seen, we also offer two types of bay nettles, regular and rainbow. These are just different color morphs of the same species. With that out of the way, let's dive into what it takes to care for them. So the only real special requirement bay nettles have is they live in a brackish salinity. In the wild, they can be found living in marine rivers and bays where the salinity varies quite drastically. Because of this, bay nettles can be kept in a wide range of salinities. There are some very anecdotal reports suggesting that bay nettles will not develop their colors and patterns if the salinity is too high. We have yet to figure out whether this is true or not though. For this reason, we recommend keeping our standard bay nettles at a salinity of 1.02 specific gravity or 27 parts per thousand. And for the rainbow bay nettles, we recommend a salinity of 1.014 specific gravity or 19 parts per thousand. Bay nettles are typically found in the summer months and they enjoy a relatively warm climate. They will be happy somewhere between 74 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Despite being one of the hardier species of jellyfish, they still appreciate stability. When it comes to salinity and temperature, pick a value and try to keep your tank stable around those parameters. In general, sea nettles are kind of weird, even for a jellyfish. When feeding, they will retract their long tentacles and curl up into a ball, often motionless. Although it looks really scary, this is a normal response for them. They'll do the same behavior when they bump into something or when they think there's food nearby. So if you see your sea nettle pouting, give it a few minutes before you get too concerned. A quick tip for handling them. A light tap on the bell usually causes them to retract their tentacles, which makes it a lot easier to move them around or when you're trying to clean their aquarium. Sea nettles are one of the more capable jellyfish when it comes to feeding, and bay nettles are no exception. Feeding them a variety of foods will really promote even growth and color. Some good options include jelly fuel, live baby brine shrimp, and frozen mice and shrimp. If you're primarily feeding jelly fuel or mice and shrimp, we recommend feeding every other day as these foods typically take longer to be digested properly. And finally, let's talk about tangling. With such long and lacy tentacles, sea nettles can occasionally get tangled up with one another. This is especially common during feeding time. Typically, they will untangle themselves after a while without any help, but if the aquarium is overstocked, the jellies may not be able to untangle themselves. There isn't a perfect rule of thumb of how many jellies to keep because that will depend on the design and shape of the aquarium. To make an example for reference though, we would recommend 3-4 to four bay nettles in our Neo 15. If you're interested in learning more about taking care of jellyfish, check out our other website, RaisingPetJellyfish.com, where you will find in-depth care for each species as well as general info on jellyfish keeping. Alright, thank you for watching. I hope this has provided some useful insight into keeping bay nettle jellyfish and I hope it's inspired some of you to look into maybe getting into the jellyfish hobby. So thanks and I'll see you next video.